Last time... Our heroes were accepted by the Dragonborn villagers, but the trio had to do one more thing before they could get shown how to get to the other side of the mountain and figure out how to get home. Dave, Mimi, and Galaxy had to defeat a monster, which actually turned out to be two monsters. To secure the area, the townsfolk called the Light, which will let them grow food under the mountain. Dun, dun, dun. I ate a pocket watch the other day. It consumed a lot of time. Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters! Welcome everybody to another episode of Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters, a, th- a fifth edition <laughs> podcast of D and D, an actual play podcast of Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, and starring Mimi, her sidekick Galaxy, and her sidekick sidekick <laughs> Dave, and also Wait, known I'm as the si- Dave's the sidekick <laughs> sidekick. Yes, also Ouch. known as Sup- also known as. Super also known mom. as Sofa Boy. 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 <laughs> what boy? Sofa <laughs> Boy. Were you here? Boy. Surfer Boy. Surfer Wait, Boy. Were you here for the last? No, he wasn't. He wasn't here for that. I haven't been here for a while. That's no, been a long time. We've got Matt with us. Hi, Matt. Yay! Hello. Hi. He's back to play Dave, it. our favorite halfling cleric. Wait, least? No, he's not my favorite. He's actually quite my least. Your least. So you have favorite. another halfling cleric that you like? Yeah, more? his name. Um, his, his name is Doc. Yeah. His name is Gerald. Oh, no. Oh, my Gerald died. I know, but he's still my favorite. He my, wasn't a cleric. My oh. favorite <gasps> halfling is Dale. Oh, God. oh no, mine is Dale. My, Dale is that like evil Dave? He's I, got a, he's got a goatee. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite <laughs> is a girl named <gasps> Felicity. Non Galaxy. I was actually thinking Felicity. <laughs> All right, and but it's non galaxy. And I'm I'm Kurt, Daddy the Dungeon Master. Thanks everyone no, 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 for no, no, for joining. No. <laughs> all right, we get all the sillies uh, out. Uh, shake all the sli- burp uh, all the sillies out. Uh, get it all out. Get it all out. Uh, uh, shake it all out. Time. Blooper time. <laughs> Do you remember what happened last time? Mm-mm. No, we killed those yeah. monsters that was yeah. in the sunlight area. For the dragonborn people in this underground village. Right. And Sam killed her own pet pig. No, I didn't. Nope, that was... She didn't kill a pet pig, but that was actually the previous episode that we were dealing with the pigs. <laughs> hey! Welcome to a new episode. Yeah, new episode. New episode. <laughs> but we're picking up right where we left off. So, Jed led you back to the, the more populated area of this underground city, which again yeah. is a gigantic underground city that is illuminated by the green water, the umulescent, the Mountain Dew. It's not Mountain Dew. Water that that runs through it and surrounds it. So everything has kind of a, a ghostly <laughs> green glow to it's it. It's a Mountain Dew. So back to the populated areas of the town or the city. Jed asks you a question. He says, "So." When should we leave for the other side of the mountain? In one, in, in one Wait, minute. Now? And for and for you and the listeners at home, do you remember why we wanted to get to the other side of the mountain? So we to could defeat the person. And we could get the red and bronze and orange dragons back well, even. We got tra- you guys got transported here to this snowy mountainous world. Yeah. And you don't know why or really exactly how you got here, but you're trying to figure out a way home. And you were told that there is this fire giant named Zelane on the other side of the mountain that's been taking the gold and red dragonborn and basically impressing them into, into slavery. And he's got a horde of powerful magical items that the people in the town think that if you get over there and get into his treasure, treasure trove, you'll be able to find something that could send you home. That's the reason why that you want to get over to the other side of the mountain. Do you remember that at all? Yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. 
Let's Moving go on. hunting to the mountains. So sometimes it, it's a good thing playing D and D with nine year olds because you have to recap so much. I feel like from a podcast perspective, <laughs> right. it helps anyone just jump right into the episode and totally. know what's going on because I have to recap it for everybody. <laughs> Jed leads you back to his house where you can prepare and get food and water um, and rest up or any other potential traveling supplies that you, that you might want. Thank you, Jed, for letting us stay with or in your house and taking care of us. My pleasure. Thank you. You saved my life after all. I said, thank you. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like this? Michigan? Michigan Dave. <laughs> I thought it, I thought Michigan was a god. A goddess. Oh. So Jed tells you. So the the way to the other side of the mountain, there's two different ways that I know of. Yeah. The first one is over the top of the mountain, of where we'd have to go back out into the snow, into the coldest areas of the mountains i'm not taking you that way because that's where the golds and the reds typically travel and they guard that way into that side of the mountain okay okay so the other way that i'm taking you is that we're going to be going down very deep into the mountains so deep that we may be getting close to the underdark what's the um, underdark I like Plan C. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Plan C. Wait, what? I said there's three options. I said there's two options. Sorry, um, my mom was gonna buy hearing aids, but then she forgot because she died. So <laughs> 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 she for- <laughs> my mom was gonna buy me a pet unicorn, but so, she never wanted. I'm she did sorry. Didn't. Please deal with. with because of my mom forgetting my hearing aids. So, the Underdark is a very dangerous place to be going through. We must tread lightly and move quickly because virtually everything in the Underdark will try to kill you. Then why are we going in the Underdark? Because the path is still easier than going over the mountain and dealing with the guarded area. Why don't we just go straight through? Can you travel straight through stone? Yeah. You wow! You must be a very powerful wizard. I can teleport. Come on, Bacon, let's teleport. Can you teleport? Do you have the teleportation spell? <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. Show me the spell. Show me the card. Me the card. Bluff called. <laughs> this is not something you can just write in your character sheet. <laughs> or can I have it? Ooh, there it is. Nope. This is one of the reasons why we were using the spell cards. Wait. Well, I picture that Galaxy is furiously paging through her (laughs) spell 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 book right now. Yes, I do. You have teleport. Yes. How far? What's the range on teleport? Um, two hundred feet. Two hundred feet. Well, you would need to be able to teleport a couple of miles, so Uh that that spell is not going to be far enough. And do you have to? And and hold on. Now I forgot what I was going to say. What was it, Sam? What if she teleports us one mile, then one mile, then one mile? But it only goes 200 feet. And a mile's like 5,000. And, and don't you have to see where you're going to? April Fool's! It's, uh, it's October, so... Um, I don't have It's very surprising. That's that's the best way to play a prank on someone is to do an April Fool's <laughs> prank on them when it's not in April October. Fool's. Yeah. Or not any any other day. Like yeah. <laughs> You're not expecting it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Definitely not. But I do have fly. Yep, you do have fly. Yes, that could that could come in handy at some point. Indeed. You've already made use of that spell many times. I believe I, I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jed leads you out because apparently you're not doing anything constructive. Besides... <laughs> So I guess sp- studying your spell book could be could be constructive oh, if you're yeah. just paging through that and trying to figure out what spells that you're going to be going with. You did pick out your spells for today, right? Yep. All right. So Jed leads you out of the city into the more natural areas of the mountain, going through large caves. They look like that they have seen lots of foot traffic in years past, but it doesn't look like that these are areas of the mountain that get get used very very recently. At least the the dragonborn, they don't go down these paths. 
and he takes you deep into the mountain, going down. And he carries a torch with him, which Dave, as a halfling, is probably very, very grateful for. Uh, the girls, as being elves, you have your night vision, so the dark doesn't doesn't bother you. But Jed carries a torch, and he lights the way. I could have cast dancing lights. Well, Jed doesn't know that. Hey, do you, I tell the Jed, do you want me to cast a spell to make the so we have light? I have a torch. I know, but if you don't want to keep holding the torch. Hers is really colorful. Sure, I'll let you know. If you need it, okay. Okay. So he leads you down further. And you travel for about two and a half hours. Constantly going down further into the mountain. And he leads you down a couple of different branches. And larger areas and smaller areas and there's a couple of times where you have to like move sideways through like a broken crack in the in the stonework but these appear to be like the caves and the rocks have just caved in on themselves over time just worn away not that he's he's leading you randomly but you do think that it would be very difficult for you to find your way out of here if you lost jed and eventually you come to a large opening, and there is a carved stone entryway. Very elaborately carved. Looks like it. this is something from the original dwarven inhabitants of this dwarven fortress. And the stonework on it depicts dwarves fighting other dwarves on it. And it's about... 20 feet tall and by about 10 feet wide. Jed looks back at you and says, This is the entrance into the Underdark. Uh, really? We have to be Have careful. you been here? I've been here a couple times. Have you been into the Underdark? Yes. Is it scary? It is very scary. Have you fought monsters? No. Not in the Underdark. Because is there monsters? There are monsters, yes. Have you encountered the drow? Me personally, no. Have you met a cave monster? A, a cave monster? I've been very careful. So we all, goblins? <laughs> I've not seen goblins. This is I saw a goblin! 20 <laughs> questions over here. <laughs> so we must be careful, we must be quiet, and we must be quick. Yeah. Follow me. And he <gasps> sneaks into the, into the room. It's a large room, but it's all crafted and lined in the same perfect dwarven stonework. You barely make out the seams that's in, in the, the, the large bricks that make up the, the floor and the walls. And one thing that also catches your eye as, as you go in is that there are large statues at least in the corners in the, by the door that you came through. And it's a, it's a carving of a large dwarf, each one about uh, eight feet tall and their cheeks are puffed out and it looks like that they're they're bracing themselves and bl taking huge breaths and blowing air out of their mouths into the room but they're frozen in in stone so they're just carvings of them blowing air into into this room you get about halfway into the room and that's when jed stops and he holds out his torch further and he peers into the darkness in front of him. And that's when you hear him say, Oh no. And he says, Go back! Run! Come with us! And I need everybody to roll a... Yes. Roll a dexterity check for me. Ooh. Is Jack gonna be okay? Seven. Two unnatural 20! Okay. A natural 20. A natural 20, wow. All right. So um, everybody is very lithe on their feet except for Dave, unfortunately. <laughs> How about you do So that? Dave gets Seven. startled by this sudden change in direction and tone from, from Jed. And you get flustered a little bit. And you, you turn on your heel and your foot catches on something. And you're like, hey. I, pick, I pick Dave up and put him on my back. Like well, he doesn't trip or fall down. No, he just, I, know. I, pick, yeah. I pick him up. 
Okay, can you... All right, roll the strength check for me. If she fails, I'm going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> if I fail, I'm just going to try it. So I'm just... So I didn't try lifting him up. I'm just keep running. I don't care. <laughs> the hand. Okay. So you look back... It failed, so it didn't happen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try now. An 18. An 18. All right, Dave, you want, you want to have a contest here? Is that an 18? I thought that looked like a 14. Oh, she picked up the dice right away? Birdie, yeah, it's you fine. can't do that. It was. It's in your hand. <laughs> well, I got an eight, so okay. she scoops me up, apparently. So you while you're trying, while, you, while the two of you think about and then also start wrestling with Dave immediately, <laughs> because he just tripped a little bit. <laughs> No, no, I didn't. The stone entryway that you came in slams shut in front of you. Dave, that was all you. How dare you? <laughs> it's not your fault. And Jed says, oh, no. Again. What? And done? now I need everyone to roll initiative. Uh. Before that happens, though, Dave, Dave says, wait, guys, wait, guys. Uh, I remember something I did another time that worked. Let me try something. And he walks up to the to the doors. And he goes, "Open sesame." <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. <I> got, <laughs> Nothing I got, happens. I got twenty. I got because that other adventure where he said that, but it was like total coincidence. I got a natural twenty. But I Dave's dumb. All right, twenty for Galaxy. I got a twenty-three. Three. three for Mimi. Thirteen. Thirteen for Dave. Getting those bad rolls out right away. Uh, Jed got a two. Jen. I'm not the last one. All right. So now that's when all of you hear the hissing of air. It's a snake! <gasps> Is that a beholder? It's a beholder? So the hissing of air. It's a beholder? No, it's not a beholder. It's a beholder! <laughs> There's nothing I could say that wouldn't convince her that no. it's a beholder. <laughs> it's a beholder! <laughs> <laughs> I oh, knew it! We're dead. <laughs> no, you hear the hissing of air rushing into this room. We're dead! We're dead! And We're dead! It's got kind of a greenish color to it. And you can see that it's coming from the statues in the corners of this room. And the room quickly starts to fill up with this green mist. And I need everyone to roll a constitution saving throw for me. What? Are we going to die? Oh, I got this 12. Oh my god. Oh, now 12. I got a 4. Okay. Dave? Uh, 5. Boy, all of you missed this then. And all three of you take 18 points of poison damage. Immune to poison. Does it say that? Right. What's the name of your helmet? It's brilliance. Helmet brilliance? Yeah. You have resistance to fire damage oh. while you're wearing this helmet. Not to poison damage. Okay. So you everybody takes 18 points of poison damage. So you all start coughing and gagging on this poison gas that has now started pouring into the room. The next person that is up is Dave. I think Dave would uh, cast a healing spell. But I'm also wondering if we're going to be continually affected by the poison. Yeah, I think he would anyway. Uh, Dave's going to cast spell uh, Prayer of Healing. Okay. So that's going to affect everybody. Even the monster? No. There is no monster in the room. What? You're in a trap. The door slammed shut and then started. the room started filling up with gas that came out of the mouths of the dwarven statues in the corner. So everyone gets back 21 Ooh. points uh, or hit points. So everyone <laughs> races all, all... Yeah, everyone races all the damage that you just took. Dave holds up his hands and a wave of white... Mystical light shoots out from him and envelops everyone. And everyone, all the damage that they took from, from that poison gets washed away and everyone is feeling a lot better. And then that's also when the gas abruptly stops. And you hear... Kavunk. 
coming from the statues. And it is Mimi's turn now. Wait, what? Are you going backwards? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Dang it. I forgot. You got a 20. You should have went before Dave. So, let's, <laughs> so Galaxy, let's do let's do your turn now. Sorry about that. Investigation. Okay. What are you going to investigate? The room. Anything in particular about the room? Okay. No, you should do the statue. That was my mistake. Because Dad said something came from the 18. statue. All right. So with an 18, just in general of the room, you determine that the gas is coming from the statues. That's all? You move over to one of the statues. So you're standing in front of one of them now. And you do see that uh, there is actually three holes that you can see in the statue. There's one in the carving of the mouth. There's one that's right about the uh, top button area at the top of the dwarf's chest. And then there's another one that's a little high for, for the belly button, but they've been very neatly hidden to, to work in with the design of the dwarven statues, but they're very plain once you see them. There's three openings that are there. And the gas, the green poison gas, was coming from the top hole. The one of the dwarves' mouth. My turn? That's your turn. Okay. okay. Um, Mimi, yep, now it is your turn. Go over to this, that statue me, the galaxy was looking at. Okay. And I turn the holes to the right. They're, no, they, um, they're, it's, it's a stone statue, and it's a hole that's drilled into the stone. So there's oh. nothing to, there's nothing to turn oh. or manipulate. I put my fingers in there. I put okay. All my fingers in the hole. You put all your fingers in the hole. Okay. And then I see what happens. Okay. All right. So and then I cast. No, no. And then I cast dancing lights. You need your fingers to do that. I take. One of my hands out. Do it. I'll stick my hands back in. Okay. All right. So you you cast dancing lights and then put your fingers back back in the hole. <laughs> and Jed sees the two of you running over to to the one statue, and he comes up behind you as well. And he's like, <coughs> "What are you? What are you? What are you doing?" I am trying to stick my fingers in the holes. There's holes in the statues. Duh. Yeah. Duh. That's a really good idea. Too big, sorry. And he runs over to the other statue that's in in the other corner, but he doesn't quite get there in time when you hear another whooshing of gas coming out. Cover your nose and mouth. And this gas is a little bit different than the first gas that came out. This gas has a reddish tint to it. Blocking the holes. You're blocking the holes in the statue that you're in front of, and the gas is not coming out because you have it blocked up. But when you look back over your shoulder at the statue that Jed is running to, and when you look across the room to the other statues, you can see that there's gas coming out of those. So there's which still hole? gas. Which it's coming out. Um, roll a perception check for me. Can I answer? Yeah. Feels? Sure. Well, you can do it too. A 12. A 12? Okay. Mm -hmm. D Dave, do you want to roll a perception check too? So, Galaxy got a 10. No, you got a 6. No, she rolled a 6, she has plus 4, she got a 10. Dave got a 21. <laughs> so, Dave, you notice that it, it is the middle hole uh, that this red gas is coming out of now. And Jed is running over to uh, to the other corner, and he's got his torch out, and he's running, he doesn't quite make it there by the time that the gas comes out. And he stops short, and he sniffs, and and again he says, "Oh no!" And that's when the torch catches the gas on fire, and it explodes around Jed. Did he die? No, he managed to cover himself up pretty quickly, and and he avoided most of the damage that that came from it. But is he dying? Yeah! No, he's no, he is not dying. He's not yeah. close to dead. And um, but you guys still take so because the all of the gas in the room catches on fire. What damage is it? It's fire damage. Oh, I don't take it. All right. 
No, well, your resistance, you're resistant, you so you take half. So everyone else takes uh, four points of fire damage. Mimi, you take two points of fire damage. Nope, not bad at all. You guys got really lucky with the dice roll. All right, so now we're doing this in the correct order. So Galaxy, it is your turn now. Hi! I'm going to put my... my um, well, Mimi already has her fingers in the statue that you're standing at right now. I'm going to put my two finger, my fingers in one of them. Well, she's got she's got her fingers in all three of the holes. Yeah, I'm gonna do that also. In the other statue. Yeah. So in in so there's three other statues in this room. There's one in each corner. Yeah. Okay. So and Judd is close to Judd is close to the one that's next to the doorway that you came in. So you're gonna run to the other side of the room and plug one of those up. <gasps> okay. All right. So you run over there. You put your fingers in and you plug it up. And uh, you stop the, the gas from... Well, actually, the gas would have stopped when it got set on fire. So, But yeah, you you plug up the holes. David, it's your turn. Okay, so how many statues are left? There are two that are left, but Jed is very close to uh, the the other one. So I'll go to the final one. Now, what size of the holes? Could I fit a crossbow bolt in there as like a plug? Um, potentially. I want to try that. Okay. And if that works, then I will run around the other three and and plug them with crossbow bolts as well, so that we don't have to stand there with our fingers. In. Sure. Um, so let's roll a uh, roll an attack for me using your dexterity. So if I'm rolling attack, should I include my proficiency bonus? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh my gosh! You got a natural twenty. Nat one. Oh no. Okay. I mean, I wasn't trying to shoot it in there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, I rolled right. a one. Yep. That's awfully kind of you. Okay. If only it worked that way. Um, so you, you're you're running across the room, and you're trying to pull the bolts out of your bag, and they just sort of explode <laughs> out of your bag in every direction, <laughs> and. I, I'll let you keep running to plug the statue holes up with your fingers, or you could stop to collect the bolts. I'll run to the statue and plug the holes. Okay. <laughs> so, you you run over to the statue, and you climb up. You have to climb up onto the statue a little bit, but and because you're halfling, you can only reach the bottom two holes okay. on this. So the top hole is still still open. I run out. Um, Birdie, you should use a so, mage hand to block is, it. So, Mimi, it is your turn now. Birdie should use her mage hand to block the upper one. Are you going to use your action to yell out to Galaxy to say to do that? Because if you do, I will um, I'll let her have in, uh, an inspiration point. I'll give her advantage on the rolls on her next turn. Because it's like I you're helping her. Wouldn't I get an inspiration point? Looks like she already has a point of inspiration, though. But what I get? Yes, you you have. I will give you a point of inspiration for pointing that out, and I will give Birdie advantage on on okay. her next turn. Birdie, you should use Mage Hand. But you should use Mage Hand to block the upper hole for Dave. Okay, because Dave's too short. <laughs> yes, because yep. Dave is too short. <laughs> One point of inspiration. All right, My and then. What? Jed finally gets to his statue after being a little singed from that from that red fiery gas, and his torch has gone out now. And but thankfully lights. he can see because you cast dancing lights before you put your fingers in there, so that was a lucky lucky break. So he's able to see, and he sticks his his big copper fingers into the three holes. That's when you hear the kachunk again. And everyone that's got their finger inside the holes, which is all of you now, you could feel the pressure building up. You could feel it pushing against your finger. Don't let it go! And if you move it just a little bit, you could see a little bit of gray smoke starting to come up. But you quickly push your finger back in where nothing happens. And you kind of hear this, there's a little bit of rumbling as pressure is starting to, starting to build up. It's gonna explode! Galaxy. It's your turn now. Use May Chan. Oh, she already did that? She hasn't she done has that yet. She hasn't had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Do May Chan, and you have advantage on it! I do? Yeah. What can I do May Chan for? 
to block me. She yelled out at you on her turn to cast Mage Hand to plug up the hole that Dave can't reach on the other side of the room. Mage Hand! An actual useful application for Mage Hand. <laughs> And I love how we had to just like coax her into it, right. right? I just thought Mage Hand is her like default answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> I invented the idea. Mage Hand. All right, so Mage Hand, I believe, is a cantrip that still requires some sort of nope. hand motion nope. with it. Well, yeah, it does require a voice and semantic. So, but semantic! Yes. So, but you, it's a cantrip, so you're able to do it very, very quick. So you're able to pull one of your hands out, do the motion real quick, and say the word, and cast Mage Hand, and plug the hole back up again very, very quickly. Very little smoke comes out in front of you. And for just that moment, just like the rattling and the pressure seems to um, relax for just a moment, and then it starts shaking and building back up. And you're... What color is your Mage Hand? <gasps> Wait... It's white. I've always imagined it white. You always imagined it white. I've always imagined it either it's like gray, but in a like a like blue outline, but like a bright blue outline. Sam, that's crazy. That's like exactly how I've pictured it as well. Really? Yeah. I always picture it as a orange hand for whatever reason. What? Sometimes though, I like to picture it as like a Mickey Mouse glove. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with the with the big black buttons uh, on the back uh, of it. <laughs> I mean, technically, I, I think that you can make it look like well, whatever you so want. <laughs> make it to a unicorn hand. A uni oh, no, 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 unicorn oh, bed, oh. backpack. They unicorn can't pick anything up. Right. <laughs> unicorn backpack. <laughs> unicorn backpack. No, I'm unicorn with Pandora's box. I just opened up you here. Sure did. No, no. So I like the unicorn way that you described it. I, I like it. I like the way that you described it at the very beginning. Kind of a uh, non-corporeal, kind of a white, misty hand. I'm adding a little bit more yeah. adjectives for you. <laughs> like, yeah, doesn't it kind of seem like... Yeah, it's kind I of a, a ghostly a white hand. That's a little transparent. Uh, okay, so this mage uh, hand, this uh, white mage uh, hand. So it goes over and plugs the door, or plugs plugs the final hole in the statue, and you hear the rumbling keep going. The mountain. Dave, it's your turn. You can do anything? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, I don't so, know what I would do. All right, so you stay there. You keep your fingers in there, and the pressure's still building up, so you got to put a little bit more force in to keep your fingers in place. Mimi, your turn. I'm going to investigate and see if there's anything else to the hole. Okay. Want to roll investigation? I got a 14. 14? Okay. Uh, you don't see anything specific with the holes, but you do see some cracks starting to form in the statue. We're breaking it! Hooray! Come on, keep doing it! Woo so, Jed, he does the same thing. He keeps his fingers in there after being encouraged by Mimi. He keeps his fingers in there, and that's when you hear this ka-chunk again. And now, you feel pressure coming out of the top hole again. So this is where that green gas would have been coming out. But nothing's coming out because you all have it plugged up. And the pressure is building, and the room starts shaking even more. And galaxy. Yeah, don't do anything. <laughs> it's your turn. So. Are you going to do anything? Investigate with the All right, do an investigation for me, please. A 24! 24, all right. Hallelujah. So you keep, you keep your fingers in the three holes, and you keep concentrating on that mage hand and the other statue. And there's large cracks that are now starting to form in your statue. And the entire room is start visibly starting to shake now. And there's dust that's coming off of the ceiling. And cracks start spider webbing from the holes and across the face and the puffed out cheeks of this of this dwarf I yell statue. Out. I yell, Don't let go! And that's when the the walls crack and start to fall in on themselves and the floor starts to crack open as well and the ceiling starts coming down and the statues start falling apart and you hear this other you hear more ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk as it seems like there's all these mechanisms and things that are failing behind the walls and then the door that you came in cracks open and there looks to be a small opening that you should be able to sneak out of right now so now it is david is your turn so I zoom past and get out. 
I mean, still on my shoulder? But we need to go through the Underdark to get where we're going. That that entrance has been uh, sealed off. To go, so we ha- the only way out is to just leave. Correct. Okay. Well, then I hop down off the statue. Actually, I take a I take a big breath. <gasps> And then okay. I hop down off the statue and I scoop up my crossbow bolts, or at least as many of them as I can. Okay. On my way to the door. And I take a big breath too. <gasps> so I don't mind if it's fine if I can't scoop them all out, uh, but Dave would try and scoop at least some of them. Yeah, can you roll um, roll 2d6 for me? Seven. Okay, yep. You managed to scoop up seven on so your way dash. I dropped all of them? Yes. Okay. So then you get, you get to the door. And it looks like the opening should be big enough for everyone to go through one at a time. I, I, I quickly yell, everybody take a big breath. <gasps> yep, and Mimi, it is your turn now. I run out. Okay. So you are actually, you and Jed are the closest to the door. And so you shoot out and you get lined up right behind Dave. Jed does the same thing. He follows suit. And there's more collapsing and more rubble and stone coming off of the ceiling. It's your turn now. Okay, so you go running across. I need you to roll a dexterity check for me. And if she fails, she gets crushed. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a twist. Nobody saw that coming. Mm-mm. All right, that was a great podcast, you guys. <laughs> 16? All right. You hike up your robes, and you go dashing across the room, and you're dodging chunks of rock and stone as it spikes up out of the floor and it falls from the ceiling. And you line up behind Dave, behind Mimi, and then behind Jet. You're the fourth one in line to, to work your way out of this. And we all make it out safely. Hooray! You do make it all out safely. Huzzah! 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 Excelsior! You have solved my gas <laughs> chamber <laughs> trap. Yes! <laughs> So, and then the room continues to shake and the stone collapses down behind you and a puff of smoke and dirt behind you. And you all cough from the dust. <laughs> Jed says, well, we can't go that way now. Let's, Let me. Let's just break down the well, wall. Why, why not, Jed? He looks at you, looks at the stone, looks back at you. He's like, are, are, are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. Why don't we just break the wall? I know that we've always said that Dave was dumb. But I'm noticing smart he really does. He only has an eight intelligence. That's a negative one. <laughs> that is like, a negative one. Not, <laughs> it's not the brightest bulb on right. the tree. I just, just thought it interesting. This is a new direction you're taking, David. Yeah, well, because I haven't played him in a while, and I've so I've been listening to a lot of other people play him. Right. And I just yeah no I'm trying to yeah no I no, I dig it I'm into it. Hey, why don't we just break the wall down? Well, because well, the room is about 60 feet across, so that's now 60 feet of rubble that you would have to break through Huzzah! to get to the other side. So Jed says, so <laughs> our only option now is to go over the mountain. Uh, and he, he hangs his head a little bit. It's a long walk. <gasps> Mishikaw will be with us. Michigan! Michigan said that she can't interact anymore with us. Well, she, you know, not directly, but that doesn't mean that her presence isn't there with us. Sure. And you know, it says, Michigan always says that, uh, you know, if you try one plan and it doesn't work, well, uh, try another one. <laughs> Did you just make that up? No, of course not. What are you suggesting, Mimi? Dave, give yourself a point of inspiration. Okay. That's a great, that's a great quote (laughs) that's another thing that i'm like i've been really trying to play that like feature of dave up more where he like he makes up misquotes scripture (laughs) wait i could have just earned a point by miss saying a line nope not the same no no he's he's playing his character what i play my character without without looking at your character sheet what are your bonds and your flaws my flaw is I that I really like whiskey and I can get a little too overboard that with it. And um, my flaw and I my think that's Dave's flaw. <laughs> <laughs> my bomb. You looked at your character sheet. No, 
my I bond is that I am very sassy and I'm really nice, kind. I like children, plants, animals, and I'm a sweet little no, girl. One thing I've been thinking about doing is that um, at some point in time, I would love to do like a one-on-one episode with each of you and do kind of a, uh, a flashback episode. Mm. Of like Galaxy going through the Wizards trials, oh, that or would be great. Mimi, um, you know, discovering that she's a druid, that type of thing, and some <laughs> some event that was like fundamental to their background and to help inform them of the kind of character they are, because yeah. we haven't done a whole lot of role play. Yeah. Totally. So. Can I say my flaw? Can I say my yes, flaw? Yes. What is what is your flaw? I can't stop. She doesn't even have anything written in. <laughs> she doesn't. See, that's why I want to do the flashback episode so that we can start yeah, filling those in. in yeah. yeah. I was like, I was gonna see if she got it right, and I'm like, there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Ha. All right, Jed leads you away. Why? About two hours. So we've been traveling for about four and a half hours now under the mountain. He leads you in a different direction now, but now the entire time it's going up and is going up at a fairly good incline of where after an hour and a half, your thighs start to burn a little bit from the exertion of going up, climbing constantly for an hour and a half. Then another half an hour goes goes by and your you your legs are hurting like you feel like that it's like you don't need like a short rest or anything like that but it's like you could use a couple minutes then how about we go back to the village sleep for the night go back up to the mountain he he took you in the opposite direction so you're you're further away from the village now so and you could tell that he's he's jed is sweating and he's he's breathing hard too and he gets to an opening And you can see a little bit of light coming down into this next area of the cave. It's going to be so hot. Oh, we're still in the cave. Yep, still in the cave. The sun's going to be so hot. I can't imagine. The sun's going to be so hot. He looks back at you and he says, We've reached the stairs. (gasps) Wait, wait. This was the stairs? This was just to get to the stairs. (laughs) And he, he goes into the room. And when you go into the room, that's when you look up and you see sunlight being reflected down the shaft, but it is a shaft that is about 60 feet wide with a huge staircase that spirals all the way up. And you've never seen stairs that went up this high before. It's a 20 foot wide staircase that winds up the shaft. So there's about, there's a 20 foot hole that runs down the middle of this. Just imagining being so tired with my legs hurting and then having to walk <laughs> that much stairs, I my legs are starting to hurt. And that's when Jed says, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, everyone is having that same thought go through their head right now. After all that walking, going uphill, under the mountain, la, now we've got all these stairs we got to go up. La, la. <laughs> you look up and they are stairs that literally go up to the top of the mountain. And Jed says, my estimation, it's about two miles straight up. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I could use a tot. Uh, he pulls out his whiskey. Do you want <laughs> Takes me a little sip. Do you want me to give you some Four to five. tater tight tots out of my fanny pack? <laughs> you have a fanny pack? Awesome. You don't have a fanny pack filled with tater tots. In real life. You, you did that in real life, yes, but not... You had a fanny pack full of tater tots <laughs> yes, in real life. Yes. I like admire Napoleon, you so much. Yes, like Napoleon absolutely. Dynamite. Although I think with him it was like a cargo pocket, but nonetheless. So what do you want to do? Jed looks like he's reluctant to take the stairs, but it's the only way to go. Well, then, there, then that's it. Let's get all drunk and then we'll no, be Birdie so can, energetic. Birdie, you can fly. You can fly. I'm going to fly herself. <gasps> did you pick fly? Did you prepare fly? She did. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, later, suckers. <laughs> and then I grab her hand. Well, you could do like what you did before and turn into a duck. And, duck! and have her carry you. Birdie, if you carry me Oh, yeah, a non-flying duck. Birdie, <laughs> yeah. She can't turn Birdie, into a flying animal yet. Yeah. Birdie, if I you... If I turn <laughs> into a bunny, will you carry <laughs> me up? <laughs> okay, I'll turn into a bunny. Okay. 
<laughs> what color of bunny do you turn into? I'm a white, fluffy bunny with light, p- very light pink ears. Okay. But like inside it. Okay. You know, no. We'll meet you at the top. We're gonna beat you. I can only Bye. have for ten minutes. There's plenty of time yeah. to to go up. In fact, you might be able to fly up, fly back down, and fly up again in ten minutes. <gasps> Maybe. Here, I'll carry Dave. Because Dave, how I'll carry well, Dad. Don't you want me? I'll well, she's going to carry you up first. You, you well, won't then, have to walk at all. Look, you were able to carry both Dave and, and a duck before. So I would say that you can carry <laughs> oh, Dave nice. and a rabbit but, now. But, <laughs> but what about Jed? Uh, he's tough. <laughs> he's going to leave Jed behind. <laughs> we'll see you at the top, Jed. No, then I'm going to stay with Jed. Do you want to roll a... I can help you out with this a little bit if you yeah. want to. Yeah! Do you want to do do roll something to Not see yet. if you can think I'm of it? I'm going to stay with Jed if you fly with strength. Dave. Oh my gosh. Should I do strength? No, I was going to say roll like an arcana check or an insight check or some, okay, something. I'm doing arcana. Oh my gosh! I she need a weird roll! No, no, you got. Oh my gosh! I got twenty. No, you got a ten. Okay. Well, right. I have an idea. Um, I can speak to plants and sing to pick Jed up and carry him to the top. And does that does that work? So speak with plants. Yes. I don't think that's the way that spell works. No, I. Cannot. You tried this last time. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. It works. No, it doesn't work. That no. <laughs> You can cause a bunch of plants to grow out of the stonework and cover the entire make area. It work. But it would actually make, make Je- it, it harder for Jed to move through the stairs. It, work. it wouldn't be fair that Jed had to walk up the other way. So if you only take me and leave Dave and Jed. You can cast the spell multiple times. And you can cast it on other people. So you could cast, I'll cast it on Jed and then on me. Okay. Yeah. And then Jed could even carry Dave, yeah, yeah. and you could carry the no. bunny. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And he's Superman. He's like, da, da, da. And, you're just, and I'm just like, snuggle party. <sighs> well, actually, I think um, you have to, I think it is concentration. It is concentration. So you have to cast it on one person, concentrate on that until they get to the top, and then you can cast it on yourself. I'll go first. You like more time to snuggle with Bunny. No, yeah. I. Well, no, I think you would. You would have to cast it on Jed first, so he could fly up to the top. Yeah. Then when he gets up there, then you can cast it on yourself and and bring Mimi with you. Do I get inspiration point for telling her to fly up to the top? You already have an inspiration point. Hey, birdie. You can you can only have one at a time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you talked over this plan. So what are you gonna do? I gotta cast. Jed's like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? She's I'm gonna, making you fly. Then you hear a butt, and then he just sees Mimi turn into a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you a bunny? And then I say, I do have to admit that's better than a dinosaur. <laughs> but still, why are you a bunny? You, then wh- I snuggle up his egg. Like, that's, that's, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and so soft. <laughs> What is happening? Uh, I think that uh, Hello? we're going to fly. I'm going to fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, how do I fly? <laughs> I'm telling you, once you cast a spell, you're not going to have any problems. Oh, It'll be okay. like no gravity. You won't weigh like 2,000 so, pounds anymore. <laughs> Jed puts... I don't weigh two thousand pounds. He looks. He looks a little offended. How much do you weigh then? Especially, especially this is young Jed. He's like he's all elbows oh. and knees. He's, uh, he's way thinner you, than he was. How before. much do you weigh now? I'd say, I I don't know, but I'm what fairly certain. <laughs> uh, I would say two fifty. Don't mind them, Jed. It's just their way. So as you're lifting say- him, are you casting the spell on him? <laughs> uh, I would say two pounds. Two okay. pounds. Okay. Wait, not even two pounds. You gallon of milk anything. weighs more than two pounds. You don't even weigh anything. So Jed starts to float up into the air after you cast a spell on him, and he starts waving his arms around. He's like, oh, <laughs> what, just, do, what do I just do? Just concentrate, Jed. Just concentrate. I, 
And then, you know, and then James, you're like, I'm Superman, and you're, f and then you're going crazy. And he he evens out. He's like, oh, I I think I have it under control now, Dave. And he Dave, holds his he holds yep. his arms out. Dave runs and, and hops into his arms. And okay. then I hop into Dave's arms. No. And then I Stay glare at Dave. Dave. And he says, "Here me. we go!" And he She's shoots up into the air. She's staying with me. With Aww. with Dave. Jed shoots up in the air with Dave in his arms, and he, it's it's a good thing that it's a twenty foot span because he's like, <laughs> so but after just like you're doing great, Jed. After just like three minutes, he manages to get to the top of the, the wind is pushing the hair back off your off of your forehead. They're watering a little bit because it's as the further that you go up, the colder it gets. Okay, and you get up to the top, up. and I'll wait to describe that until they get up there. Okay. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. So you see Jed turn into this little pinpoint of movement way up at the top of the shaft. And Can then, you hear me? Can you? Then this is Echo. Can you hear me? Can you hear He can't hear you. Can you. He's too far away. So but it looks like that he got to the top. So you can stop concentrating on the spell now. And then he falls down and dies. <laughs> 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 yeah, this would have been the perfect opportunity to kill Dave <laughs> yeah. if they really Which wanted to. Been trying to do <laughs> you ride the muscle later, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, so Mimi, you're still a bunny, a little white fluffy bunny. You hop into Galaxy's arms. No, I, I jump on her head. On her head. Oh, and I'm just like, oh, you're okay with that? All right. And, it's like and, you and then I down. slip and die. <laughs> no, no, you haven't taken off the ground yet. And you don't have a stroller. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you don't have a stroller. Letter. If you keep doing that, I'm going to ignore everything on your character sheet. One, one more. No. One. Just no. a bunny stroller. No. A bunny, yeah. not a stroller. A bunny. Stroller. <laughs> a bunny stroller. Okay, you can have a bunny stroller. <laughs> That, but cross, that's the last one. That's the last I one. Cross something out so I can have one more. No, that's not the <laughs> way this works. All right, you cast, stroller. you cast flying yourself, and you shoot up to the top of the huge stair stroller. shaft. I mean a bunny stroller. <laughs> and I'm on the And up. on your way up, the bunny stroller falls out of your hands. No, it and shatters, and shatters on the floor. No, it doesn't. It's tragic and sad. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it makes me pee my pants. It does. It, it's the saddest thing Daddy, you've ever seen. It's really no. sad. It was a really cute stroller. It was. Daddy, but that means I die. No, no, no. no. you weren't in the stroller. You were on, yeah, on Galaxy's head. Well, I no, Daddy, you were on her head, you said. Well, she managed to catch you out of the stroller, oh, but no. the stroller the fell. The stroller's alive! <sighs> fine, you have a bunny. Okay, fine. Yeah! Bunny stroller, get it up to the top. <laughs> Dave, you see uh, Galaxy and Mimi as a bunny instead of a bunny stroller. You have no idea where it came from. <laughs> Where'd that stroller come from? Oh. Well, Galaxy, did you, like, conjure it? Oh, no, I just found it in my backpack. You just found it. That's some backpack. <laughs> No, it's your unicorn butt back back. <laughs> so you get up, you get up to the top. Yeah. Is this is this a bad time to to bring up that uh, you don't have uh, your ponies anymore? <laughs> I suppose we left them at the bottom because uh. we flew. Well, they'll follow though. No, 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 no. They always follow. I. They do. I they'll my, catch up eventually. I yeah. told Tiny Ginger to go back up to the village and wait. I don't remember that. I told him in. And it came. I told bacon. him in Draconic. And they and they left. The pony speaks Draconic. <laughs> and they left. And you told him to leave. To leave Emeretto. You get to the top of the stairs, and in this room opens into a wide but low stone opening. Low. Around the edges of this opening is intricately carved depictions of dwarves going to war. Dwarves. Yes. The opening is 30 feet wide, but 6 feet tall. So Jed will have to duck to get underneath of it to get out. I then look at Dave and then look back. Dave's fine. No, because he's a dwarf. No, he's a halfling. He's a halfling. Uh, on, on the outside of this opening is piles of windswept white 
powder and the cold air wafts into this room and you can already feel that your cheeks turning a little red from from the the cold uh, abrasion of it and the snow lazily drifts into the wide opening and is in and, and piles up in front of your feet so what do you do warm hand warmers which way from here jed is there's only one way out the door well let's keep moving keeping moving is the best way to stay warm and i push you at the door jed pushes you down the stairs <laughs> no i with mom. the buddy stroller. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Brady. All right, so you are now in a blustering, wintry environment, and you hear the howl of the wind at the top of the mountains. Oh. And it is super duper bright out compared to the darkness that you had inside the mountain. So you have to squint and hold your hands up to block block the light. And as you go out to the cold, you can see that there have been trails that have been tracked through the snow, but they, they look like it's been a while since, yeah. since these have been used. Mm-hmm. And off in the distance, Mimi, you specifically, you catch sight of a polar bear. <gasps> so now you would have the ability to turn into a polar bear if you wanted to. How about I got out a stroller, I turned into a polar bear, I fight it, I turn back into a bunny. <laughs> You're going to fight a polar bear? Yeah. As a polar bear. Yes. Why would you want to do? Why I thought you liked bears. I know, but I. But then I could ride in the bunny stroller. <laughs> but it's not attacking us. We well, just see it. Yeah, you just see it off in the distance. It's not paying any attention to us. I know. But now I, you can turn into one. No, I. Because right, oh. as a druid, that's the way that your animal form works. Is you have to see the animal first, and then if it's under a certain size, you can turn into it. I know. So why I'm allowing you to turn into a dinosaur? Is because simply because you were able to summon a dinosaur. That's the only time that you've ever seen a dinosaur. I don't want to hear any of this malarkey about going to the Elf Zoo and seeing a dinosaur at the zoo. I saw it. I saw it. She couldn't even. She was so excited. She couldn't even make words. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. You guys are gonna make me love a pig. I think I get a little. And so you start walk, walking through the snow and the wind. And that's when you come to a large ravine that's about 40 feet across. Is and there a thousand, there's a thousand foot drop in front of you. And looking across it, Got that's it! where you can see kind of an elaborate looking mechanism that, that is, has a bridge in place. But it seems like that the bridge is folded up on its side. And it looks like it could be extended out, but it's, it's covered in ice. And next to it is a large stone tower that's also covered in snow and ice. And Jed points at it and he says, that's where the guards will be. Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters is a proud member of the Block Party Podcast Network. Check out other shows such as GM Showcase, Story Arc, We're So Bad at Adventuring, and more.